In this video, we're going to talk about how anxiety impacts your performance as an athlete. Hey there, I'm Eli Straw, mental performance coach and the founder of successstarttoday.com. Now, I work with a lot of athletes dealing with sports performance anxiety. And sports performance anxiety involves extreme feelings of worries and nerves going into a performance. Whenever you have this anxiety, for the most part, you're worried about what's going to happen. So you're worried about the outcome or you're thinking about the outcome. You're worried about making a mistake because you don't want to embarrass yourself. You might be worried about making a mistake or performing poorly and letting your team down. But for the most part, when you have anxiety as an athlete, this is going to be because you're thinking about the outcome and you're thinking about making mistakes, not wanting to make mistakes, or really anxious because you want to perform well because you don't want to make mistakes. So everything in terms of your thinking is centered around the outcome. Now, why is this bad? Because of course you don't want to make mistakes. So could it possibly be good that you're focused on not wanting to make mistakes? Could that maybe help you actually perform a little bit better and not make mistakes? Sometimes. And I have seen that happen sometimes with some athletes where, you know, they're able to think, I don't want to make a mistake, so I'm going to be more focused in this moment. But whenever you have anxiety, these are taken to an extreme level, these feelings of worries. So really, you're not just thinking productively, I don't want to make mistakes, so I'm going to focus on the present moment. It's, I can't get my thinking off of this mistake. I'm only thinking about the future. I can't make a mistake. I can't make a mistake. I can't make a mistake. I really hope I play well. I really hope I get a hit. I really hope I make this shot. When you have those kinds of thoughts during your performance, for the most part, they're only going to hold you back. Now, the way that they hold you back is going to come on two different levels. One level is going to be the actual physical symptoms of experiencing anxiety. So if you've ever been anxious, how does it feel? Do you have, you know, a really churning stomach, maybe some shaky hands, some trembling knees, maybe your heart's really racing, you might get a little lightheaded, you might start to sweat a little bit more than usual, maybe you get a little bit dizzy, sometimes you might even have some blurred vision, which isn't exactly what you want to have when you're performing. But those kinds of physical symptoms are going to hold you back during a performance because you're physically not in the best state to perform. I worked with a basketball player this past season, and we were really focused on overcoming his anxiety. And early on when we were working together, he said that at the start of games, he didn't really feel like he had control of his body or control of his legs because he was just so anxious. So that shows us these physical symptoms of anxiety, they're going to hold you back because they actually change the way that you're feeling physically. Another example is from when I was actually in college playing baseball. I dealt with a lot of sports performance anxiety, and I can remember at bats where I was standing in the batter's box and I could literally feel my leg shaking. Now, if I could feel my leg shaking, I probably wasn't in the most relaxed and in the best state to hit because my legs were shaking. My body was trembling. I wasn't exactly calm and ready to be quick to the ball. So for you as an athlete, if you are dealing with some sports performance anxiety, those physical symptoms that you experience in the moment, those are going to impact how you play physically. Now, from a mental level, what we can think about are the ways that you're thinking, what you're focused on, and how that lowers your performance. With sports performance anxiety, you're thinking about the outcome and you're thinking about making mistakes. You're worried about making mistakes. We call that outcome-oriented thinking. So you're not thinking about the present moment. So right there we see that maybe some focus problems might be impacting your performance because you're not as focused as you need to be on this play. Another thing that happens is if you have so much anxiety centered around making mistakes, and so really in your mind you're thinking about not wanting to make mistakes, even that thought, I don't want to make a mistake, you're still thinking about mistakes. So the image that you have in your mind is of you making mistakes. That's going to lead to lower confidence, and it's also going to lead to a self-image where you're seeing yourself as a player who makes mistakes rather than seeing yourself as a player who succeeds. An example I always give for this, if I'm working with baseball players, for example, is just the difference between two simple statements. I don't want to strike out or I'm going to get a hit. Saying I don't want to strike out, you're picturing the negative feelings and the negative scene of you striking out. You're saying I don't want that to happen. The other scene is I'm going to get a hit. You're seeing yourself as successful. You're seeing yourself as someone who's going to go up there and get a hit. Now, just saying one of those two things doesn't mean it's 100% going to happen. But when we're talking on a level of confidence and trust that you have in yourself and belief you have in yourself to succeed, it's so important to be thinking in the affirmative. When you have performance anxiety, for the most part, your mind is filled with the negative thoughts. Those, I don't want to have this happen. I hope this doesn't happen. I hope I don't make a mistake. I can't make a mistake and all those kinds of thoughts. So it's the combination of the physical symptoms of performance anxiety and the way that performance anxiety influences your mindset, your focus, your confidence, that's going to lead to lower levels of performance for you as an athlete. 
Now, if you're currently struggling with sports performance anxiety, what can you do? Well, there are two options. You can either work on your own to overcome your performance anxiety, or you can work with a mental performance coach. Now, I would suggest you choosing either one of those two because you really need to work on overcoming the sports performance anxiety because it's not going to go away on its own. Now, if you want to work on it by yourself, what I've done is I've put a card right here to a video I made on overcoming performance anxiety. So go ahead and watch that video and begin applying those tools. Now, if you're interested in some one-on-one -on -one coaching, I offer one-on-one -on -one mental performance coaching where we are going to work together to overcome your anxiety. This coaching is going to involve an assessment in the beginning to really identify you know, your current mindset, what's really causing this anxiety, what kind of thoughts you're having. And then through weekly coaching sessions that are about an hour long, we're going to start working through this anxiety, developing more positive mental skills so that you can become a calmer and more confident performer. If you're interested in learning more about one-on-one -on -one mental performance coaching to overcome performance anxiety, go ahead and click the link that I put in the description below. If you have any questions about sports performance anxiety, you know, the cause of sports performance anxiety, the impact it has on your performance, then please feel free to leave that in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I put out new videos each day on sports psychology and mental training. Thank you for watching and I wish you the best of success in all that you do.